What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Francisco, and this is Stream Your Talk. Today is February 4th, 2025, and today is a day that will live in infamy because Elgato has finally released Wavelink 2.0. I just got home from work. I just updated Wavelink. So let's dive right in and see exactly what's in store for us now. So the first feature I want to get into with Wavelink 2.0 is how we now add and route app audio into Wavelink 2.0. It used to be in the past that you had to go through Windows settings to tell Windows what Wavelink channel it needed to send XYZ apps audio to. And although that wasn't much of an inconvenience for me, it just felt like it always added an unnecessary step between point A and point B. But again, in Wavelink 2.0, things are a little bit more different now because as you can tell, for starters, when you look at your Wavelink app, you're gonna see that there are now icons underneath each one of your channels and those icons will tell you what application is assigned to what channel. For example, Google Chrome is assigned to browser and Spotify is assigned to music. So how do we add app audio into Wavelink and how do we route audio now? Well, let's use good old Discord as an example here, okay? The logical, pragmatic thing to do would be to route Discord audio into voice chat. And in order to do so, all you need to do is hit the add apps button here or the plus sign and click in on Discord and you're done. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, but maybe, maybe you like to live life in some sort of a chaotic fashion and you don't want to be pragmatic because we just don't have, we ain't got the time for that kind of thinking in 2025. So you want to just add it to your, your PS5 channel like I have here. Well, you just Click the plus sign on your PS5. This is an aux channel, by the way. Click the plus sign there and just click in Discord and you can do that if you want to. I don't know why you would, but I'm not here to judge you. That's okay. Let's move on. Feature numero dos, that's number two in Espanol, is the ability to now mute your microphone directly from Elgato Wavelength, the app itself, by just clicking the gigantic mute button here. Boop. You didn't hear a thing. I know you didn't. Don't you dare lie to me in the comments and tell me you heard exactly what I said because you did, you'd be fibbing. You'd be lying. All right. I'm not really sure the use case for this, and this isn't a judgment or a critique. I just know, like, for example, the way I have my Stream Deck Plus set up is I can mute it by clicking a button there, and it's done. And I know that if you have the traditional Wave XLR, you can push in the knob and mute that there. And if you've got the Elgato Wave 3 microphone, you have the capacitive touch mute button at the top of the mic. So I know you can mute it there. So I'm not entirely sure where this will work. The only thing I can think of just now is that it will work if you're using a different audio interface. So maybe you have a Stream Deck Plus, but you don't have a interface that has the ability to mute directly from the interface itself. So you can just mute it right there. That kind of makes sense, I guess. But hey, if you've been wanting the ability to mute your microphone directly from the Elgato Wavelink software, you now, gosh darn it, I misfired. You now can by clicking that button right there. And that brings us to feature numero trois. Trois, with trois. It's like T-R-O-I-S, trois, which is three in French. All right, I took seven years of French, I'm qualified. Anyways, that brings us to voice focus. And voice focus is the one feature I was eagerly looking forward to getting my hands on and trying the minute all this was announced this morning. You see, it does what the name implies. It basically focuses all of the audio on your voice and eliminates everything else going on in your background so that you can sound as if you are creating content, recording, or streaming in a professionally treated space, even though you may not have a professionally treated space. And what you're listening to right now is my Electro Voice RE20. It is plugged into my Elgato Stream Deck Plus Wave XLR dock. That's a mouthful. That's what she said. Okay. And I do have a couple of VSTs running, namely the Elgato Noise Removal and Elgato EQ. But I'm going to go ahead and turn those off right now. And now what you're listening to is the Electro Voice RE20 with none of the, none of the VSTs on. This is what it sounds like when you plug it in directly into the Wave XLR dock, set up your gain, and you're done. All right. Let's go ahead and turn on voice focus and see what it does now. Boom. This is the Electro Voice RE20 running into my Elgato Stream Deck Plus Wave XLR dock using voice focus. I did try to sound like a radio broadcaster just now. How did, did it work? Did y'all like it? Do you think I could do that? Could I make money? Could I, could I make a career off of using my voice? I don't know. Let me know what you think. I'm not going to lie. 
I am very, very impressed with voice focus. I think it does an absolutely phenomenal job of canceling out any other noise going on in your background. And this is going to serve thousands of creators out there. All right. So if you've been worrying about getting room echo into your microphone audio, you no longer have to worry about that. And as a matter of fact, I prefer voice focus over Elgato's noise removal VST. The reason being is that in that VST, if you do not adjust the threshold for it, you will have parts of your speech cut out because you're not exceeding the threshold itself if it's set too high. And therefore, it's not until the first two letters of the words are said that it finally registers your voice and opens up the gate to pick up and record your voice or you know transmit it out and broadcast it out to your streams, for example. Now, this is with voice focus turned on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off noise removal and I'm gonna turn on my VSTs here so you can also hear what it sounds like with voice focus and some EQ. So yeah, here it is, it's on. This is the Electro Voice RE20 plugged into my Elgato Stream Deck Plus Wave XLR dock. I'm not gonna make that joke again. With voice focus turned on at its default setting as well as using my Elgato EQ settings for this microphone specifically. How does it sound? What do you think? Let me know now. You know, sometimes life just serves you up with a segue that you you just can't walk away from. And this is one of those instances because I was just listening to this previous clip to make sure that the audio sounded good and you'd be able to hear a noticeable difference from, you know, all the little mic testing that we just did. And I noticed something. I noticed that my mic audio sounded a little harsh, specifically on the high end of things. And that in the audio world is what we like to call sibilance. And the best way to resolve sibilance in using any sort of a plugin is by getting a plugin that is called a de-esser. And in Wavelink 2.0, Elgato has made its own de-esser and added it into the Elgato Marketplace for free. So you just go to the Marketplace, you download the de-esser, you add it to your Wavelink, you open up your Stream Deck, and we're going to set it up together, you and I. We're going to go down here to Effects, click the button, add Effect, go to Elgato, and de-esser. Let me move this over here so you can see it. There we go. Okay. Start DSing fast. Let our smart setup choose the ideal settings for your voice. Just hit record and say the sentence below into your mic. We have to click the button. DSer, smooth the sharp S sounds. Tuned to your voice, our DSer is now smoothing out your vocals. You can close this window. We'll keep running in the background. I have no idea if this is even working at all. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Well, that's what the DS are turned on. Let me turn it off. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. That works magnificently well. I just played that back to myself and oh my God, how do y'all listen? How have y'all listened to me without a DS or this whole time? I apologize to all of your tympanic membranes out there because I'm pretty sure I was ripping them to shreds. Thank you, Elgato. This was a very thoughtful inclusion in Wavelink 2.0. And last, but certainly not least, my favorite feature, second favorite, voice focus is definitely my favorite feature. My second favorite feature to be added into Wavelink 2.0 is the ability to record yourself in order to test your microphone's audio. In the past, the way I've had to do this is that I basically set up my VST, set up my microphone, adjust my gain, and then I have to basically listen to my stream mix output to see how it all sounds. And although it's worked for me, did you know that it's not necessarily an accurate representation of how you sound because you're not necessarily sure if you're listening to the actual audio after all the effects have been sprinkled on top of it or if you're just listening to yourself and all the frequencies resonating within your dome. But now you don't have to worry about that anymore because you simply go down to the effects down here at the bottom and you hit record. And I'm afraid to do that right now. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and not do that because I feel it's gonna like cause a whole bunch of audio issues. But you record a small sample of yourself and it's going to play it back with any effects that you have in the chain. And then you can go back through and make adjustments if you need to and just simply record yourself once more. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Very, very nice quality of life improvements in Wavelink 2.0. Now, the only thing I'm going to test out here that I don't believe they've mentioned is whether or not Wavelink can now automatically detect what kind of audio source it is and auto assign it to the most logical channel out there. And in order to test this, I'm going to play some Final Fantasy VII Rebirth on PC and see if it assigns it to the game channel. I'll be right back.
Unfortunately, it looks like we're not quite there yet, but I really hope that that's something they've got planned for us further down the pipeline. And if someone from Elgato happens to watch this, please bring this to somebody. It'd be really cool to see that happen. Others are already doing it. And I would love to see that feature here where you just pop open your app, your game, whatever it is, and Wavelink automatically detects what it is and assigns it to the most logical channel that it should go to. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, but besides that, ladies and gentlemen, this is pretty much everything that is new with Elgato Wavelink 2.0. I am a big fan of these changes. I think that they nailed the changes. This is fantastic stuff. Great quality of life improvements. Amazing inclusion of voice focus. Very nice to see a DSer added into the mix. The ability to record yourself to test your own mic's audio without having to record a clip externally and then go into some sort of application to listen to playback just to make sure it sounds great or having to rely on what you hear when you monitor your own audio through your own headphones, which is very unreliable, by the way, uh, whoops, is fantastic. So that's pretty much it. I appreciate y'all. Y'all have a wonderful day. Be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. Peace out.